and welcome back to Turntable Guy. Hope everyone's doing well. On the bench today, we have a Techniques SLB202. Uh, this is the belt drive version of the SLD202, which I have a video on if you're interested in looking at that. Uh, so this is, like I said, the belt drive version. Uh, very similar, um, semi-automatic. Uh, what do we have here? Pitch adjustment. Um, stop control. I'm not sure if this one is... Uh, operated uh, with a solenoid like the SLD series. I guess we'll have a peek when we open that up. But uh, just your standard techniques turntable. This is a bit of a workhorse. Uh, decent quality unit. Give me auto return to go back there. Um, other than that, uh, servicing should be very similar to the SLD series except you're not going to be lubricating the techniques direct drive motor. We're going to open it up and uh, have a peek around. I'm pretty sure this one's pretty empty as far as features, but this one will have just a standard uh, motor mounted off to the side. There it is there, and uh, it'll have your standard bearing, so we'll lubricate that. We'll service the motor and uh, have a peek inside, and uh, obviously we'll, we'll clean this pitch control. It feels a little bit sticky. Um, other than that, just really not a whole lot to do with these ones. These are really solid, reliable uh, turntables. Uh, not quite as nice as the SL23 in my opinion, but uh, still very good quality. Uh, let's uh, just have a quick uh, peek around and see how it is functioning before we actually uh, start working on it. This one's got the dreaded uh, hinge tabs, plastic hinge tabs. And these ones are still in decent condition. Doesn't look like there's any cracking. So we'll make sure that those don't break. And let's plug it in, see what it does. Okay, no power switch on this one. I believe the SLD has a power switch. So this one's just activated as soon as you move the arm. Cueing works. It drops slowly, which is good. All right. So this one, oh yeah, the speed is very off. So our 33 should be at the bottom there. I can't get it to stabilize. So that means we're gonna have to do some uh, adjustments on the motor board. Yeah, it does, it's not stabilizing at all. I don't know, sometimes the uh, the motor controls are accessible from the top. Let's have a peek on this one. So we're just gonna take our belt off here, which feels a little loose. Yeah, it is a little loose. It looks like it's been sitting for a while. Oh, there's our, I think those are our motor control uh, switches right there. So if you look, yes, I can see them right there. So right over to the side, right by the motor, are the two motor control uh, potentiometers. So you can access them from the top if you don't want to go underneath and, and do any servicing. And this belt still has a, a little bit of elasticity, but I like it uh, when the belt, and you can see there's a little bit of wear on this side. And this side is still pretty, uh, pretty dull, but this side's shiny. It looks like, you know, the brass from the uh, pulley there. So I like when the uh, when a belt can hang on to this portion of the platter without falling off. Now this one fell off immediately, which means it's probably stretched a little bit. So if we put it around here like this, I like to see that when I turn it over, it hangs on. Eh, kind of is. That could just be friction. It's really loose. Trust me when I say that. It's really loose. Um, it's just hanging on by by friction. Um, very 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 loose so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this in the microwave and I'm gonna boil it for about four or five minutes just to retighten it and uh, clean it as well boiling does clean off the belt so we're gonna do that and uh, we'll adjust our our speed pots as well um, I'll probably adjust them from the bottom because when you do it from the top you're gonna have to stop it every time make an adjustment, start it up again, right? Whereas if you're doing it from the bottom, you can do it on the fly. So you're adjusting it as it's spinning and then you can dial it in with the, uh, with the strobe light here. So I'll probably end up doing it from the, uh, from the bottom. Um, what I'm gonna do though, in the meantime, is I'm just gonna give those potentiometers a little shot of contact cleaner. And by the time we get to them, it should be nice and soaked in. 
and you can actually uh, you can grab a screwdriver a small screwdriver flat head and uh, you can give those where's my flat head there it is you can give those a little turn just to work in the uh, the contact cleaner so just spin them back and forth and set them to about center they've probably never been touched since it left the factory so we'll just spin those let the cleaner do its work and then we can go about servicing the rest of the turntable and we'll go back to the speed settings at the very end all right so we'll take the platter off and uh, remove our 45 adapter this is uh, pretty dusty and what's it got for a cartridge here it's got the original factory head shell and it's got an AT uh, Audio Technica AT either 1891 or um, it can also be called the CN uh, 5625AL the one with the yellow uh, yellow stylus We'll take that off and we will remove our counterweight and we'll unplug it and we'll begin our standard technique service okay we got one two three four five six seven screws here should we pause or should we watch the electric? You know what? I'm going to pause. I'll be right back. Okay, screws are out. Oh, guess what? Missed one. That's because I didn't have my glasses on. I just ran upstairs to grab them. I'm like, how can I be servicing a turntable without my reading glasses? Am I really losing it? Yeah, I am. Look at that. Eh? I missed two screws. This one's kind of hiding behind the foot, though. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, El Cheapo feet on this one. Just uh, press through rubber feet. Ooh, this one's really rock hard. Actually, they all feel really hard. Actually, this, one, this one's not too bad. But this one is hard like a rock. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, the platter mat rot you see in Techniques. Looks like we're getting foot rot here. I don't think Dr. Scholes is going to cure that one. All right. So, what's the first thing we're going to do here? Well, my guess is that we want to get the speed under control first thing. So, uh, right here on the front is our main potentiometer and our 33 and 45 switch. Okay. Um, you can remove this if you want to get at it, or you can leave it in place. It's really up to you. Um, you can spray your, your uh, deoxid or, or contact cleaner in there, and you can also hit your switch from here. Um, you really don't have to remove it, so why don't we do that? So just get your contact cleaner, flood your pot, just like that. You want to work that back and forth a little bit. You guys know the drill. This is the biggest issue with most techniques decks is that the pitch main pitch controller here gets dirty and then you get erratic speed. So get that cleaned. And then your speed switch. So you've got a spot right here to hit it. And we're just going to work that up and down. Make sure that's good and clean as well. All right. Okay, so next up, main bearing. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. So a couple ways to get at this bearing. We're gonna just get to remove the, the bearing cap here. So this is kind of this is like the uh, the open bearing, similar to what the 1200 Mark II uses. So. There's no actual pit where the, uh, the spindle sits in like a vat of oil. It's open and it flows downward. 
And if you look right there, there is the slightest little bit of uh, either oil or grease left. I, I always like to put just a dab of synthetic grease there. Or you can put it on top of here, doesn't really matter. So there's the auto return mechanism functioning there. So we don't want to mess with that. Oh, screws just went flying. Yeah, the only way to get this bearing out is to remove this plastic gear. And uh, you saw me do that once on the 12, remember that Nightmare 1200 that I worked on? Well, we did that on that. Um, I'm not going to be doing it on this one, okay? Uh, we're going to oil this from the top or grease it from the top. Definitely, you know, something that, uh, I lost that screw. There it is. Something, something, something you want to do, you definitely want to have this lubricated, uh, but you definitely don't want to be messing with this. Now, you can try to remove it, and if you do want to try and remove it, what I recommend you get is a couple picks. Okay. The problem is, is that these little, did I just hit that with my head? Yes. These four little plastic dongles here, they're a pain in the butt. And if you snap them, because don't forget, this is very brittle plastic. If you snap them, it's game over. I just want to show you roughly. You got to get in behind each one and then spread the teeth out, push down on the, uh, on the spindle and it should pop out the other side, right? And you grab it from the, from the other side. But uh, they are stiff. They are slightly brittle. And there's four of them. So it's a real pain in the butt to get at. So what I usually do is I put one pick in there, one pick in here, until they start dislodging a little bit. It helps if you have like 15,000 picks like I do here. There's your third one. Something like that. If someone knows of a tool or a better way of doing this, uh, leave it in the comment section because I have never found a better way of doing this than the way I'm doing it. And like I said, I really don't do it that often because it's such a pain in the butt, right? So, so that's what you're going to do. You want to spread those and then with your thumb or your finger, give that a push. It'll drop out and you can relubricate it, okay? The other option is to get a nice coating of oil from the top and just let it soak in like the, the 1200 series bearing. But what we're going to do in the meantime is uh, what I do with that bearing cap. Here it is. I'm going to put a little bit of synthetic uh, grease on that uh, bearing cap. Grab a screwdriver and a little bit of grease, just like that. And here you go for good measure because I don't want to waste it. Grease is so expensive these days, especially uh, the synthetic stuff. A tube of uh, like Permatex here. It's like eleven dollars now. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, other than that, this is our motor board here. And uh, you know what? We may not. Oh no, we can't. We can't access them. Access them. They're right here. Um, yeah. So let's. Um, 
let's pause. I'm going to boil that belt and then we'll come back and uh, we'll set up the speed. Uh, we'll get a screwdriver underneath here. Yeah, we'll get a screwdriver underneath here and uh, we will uh, we'll set up the speed and then make sure that we've got proper speed in this thing. And uh, I'll explain how we do that. But just let me let me go boil that belt and I will return. Okay, so we gave this uh, belt a nice boiling. It's cleaner already. Even the side that was rubbing against the or running against the motor here, uh, it's much cleaner. But we're going to flip it around and we're going to run this side against the motor when we when we set it up. But uh, yeah, if we put it against our platter now. We're gonna go ugly side out. It's just a little, it's just a, ever so slightly tighter, right? Just a little bit, it just gives it a little bit, it just shrinks it, just a, just a smidge, right? So, and we're also, we're also gonna clean this surface here. Can you see on the platter there where the belt has been riding? There's a kind of gunge there. I'm gonna clean that off. So, just a paper towel. Uh, I've already got one here soaked in alcohol. Just, uh, just wipe that off. Get that nice and clean. If you have one where the belt has died against the platter, um, I find that a Scotch Brite pad and a degreaser, after you get it like razor bladed off, works really well for getting that uh, dead belt off. Okay. So that's better. So that's nice and clean. We're also going to clean where the belt rides against the motor pulley. So we'll just put that in there for now. We're not going to put the uh, put the feet back on for this uh, adjustment. So we're going to turn the table over and it's just going to sit. You know, there's nothing really protruding from the bottom here. So it's just going to sit on its butt. And uh, what's the best way for me to do this? Here are the two potentiometers, VR2 and VR1. Um, and even says, uh, looks like, to turn uh, counterclockwise to speed it up. It says uh, counterclockwise fast. So uh, we'll do that. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to have that hanging over the side of my bench. I really need a turntable stand. I guess just a... Uh, Couple two by fours to do that. All right. So for this adjustment, you have to get your platter on. I'm not going to mess with the motor yet. Just want to get this done, and we'll, we'll give it a service. See, I can I can hardly get that belt off the platter now. It's, it's just shrunk just enough. All right, so put that against there. And can you guys see that okay? Maybe just pull it back just a bit here. Okay. I know it's going to be difficult. Maybe what I'll do, I'll put my, uh, I'll put my big uh, wheel on there. I don't know if that helps or not. Um, I've watched some of my videos where sometimes it, you can really notice the speed really well. And sometimes you can't see the strobing action at all. Um, I have new lights in the uh, in my work uh, workroom here. Um, I picked up these uh, huge LED, uh, almost like a fan, and uh, I got those at Costco, and it's a, a thousand times brighter in here. So hopefully it uh, it looks good on video. All right, so uh, we'll put our head shell on too. So we have uh, actually, you know what? We don't have to put our head shell on because we took off our counterweight, so we should be fine there. And uh, we'll do 33. So we've got spinning action. We certainly do. Okay. So remember, we couldn't get 33 to work, no matter what we did. So what we want to do is we just want to we want to get this pitch in the center. So what I usually do is I count how many times my finger goes across it. So I go one, two, three. So three, so we'll go one and a half to get center. So one and a half. So right there, that should be kind of center. And uh, I'm going to get underneath here, and I'm going to adjust the 33 pot. 
So I'm just going to get my uh, piece of crap LED flashlight, which never works. Maybe one or two. There we go. And we'll get under and we'll do some adjustments. So you can't see me. I'm just underneath here. All right. So I'm going to spin VR2. And that is for 33. And we are lining up 33. Right about there. And can you see it's stabilized here? I don't know if you can or not, but I'm looking at the pitch light right now. It's looking really good. All right, so we just want it, we want to get it. This control is kind of dirty. I'm just going to move it back and forth a little bit. Very touchy. I want to get it right there. Okay, so now let's go to 45. 45 is very slow. So we're going to go down to VR1. Put our screwdriver in there. And we're going to adjust that now. Get 45 lined up. And I say right. There. I was looking at the wrong stroke. My apologies. Right there. Right there. Okay. So that should be good for both. All right, 33. Dead on balls accurate. I mean, there's always a little adjustment you can mess with. Here's your 45. Maybe we'll just, uh, let's adjust 33 just one more time. Because sometimes when you adjust 45, it affects 33. So just another fine tuning here. All right there. 33 pot is very touchy. These potentiometers haven't been touched in 40 years, right? So as soon as you touch them, that's why I like to spray them. Okay. I'm going with that. I'm happy with that. If a little pitch adjustment is necessary, then a little pitch adjustment is necessary. That's just life. That is dead on balls accurate, 33. All right. So our speed is taken care of. Let's unplug, unplug our deck again. And service the motor and pulley. Let's zoom in again. Oh, see our belt fell off. So it's not perfect, but it's not bad either. So here's our motor right over here. Your standard Techniques motor. This one looks pretty beefy. Bearing's a little noisy, but they tend to quiet down when you put the belt on. A little electric motor oil. Okay. Lift your uh, lift your pulley up. Give it a drop. That's it. Plug it in again. Grab a Q-tip. Your Q-tip. Grab your alcohol. Move your arm over with the motor spin. And we're going to just clean off the pulley. By cleaning the motor pulley, you know, you're making sure there's no grease or oils or belt residue. And there's always a little bit, right? So if you look at that, can you see that? There's always a little bit on, you know, some, some, it depends on the belt quality, right? Just clean that off. Let it dry a little bit. Let it spin. Let that oil wick down into that top bearing of the motor. 
and do its thing. And then uh, just like a Techniques 1200 or anything like that, I'll use the same electric motor oil. Just reach up on your spindle here, put a couple drops of oil in there. And that, my friends, is it. Usually that's all you need to do to these turntables. You can check out a return as well. It's working. Probably catching on my towel. There we go. That's it. I'm going to uh, reinstall the bottom and uh, we'll set up the arm and uh, and give it a test. Be right back. Welcome back. All right, we're all back together again. Um, we're just going to set up the arm here. Uh, I've got it plugged in. We'll be very careful. I'm going to do it manually here because that's what most of you guys are going to be doing at home. I recommend unplugging your turntable when you're doing this. You really don't want to have a record spinning on here or a platter spinning while you're doing it. So. Move your weight back until you got a balance. Set your anti-skate to zero for this. Okay. Perfectly level. Arm back. Set counterweight to zero while holding the weight. Rotate now. Facing you counterclockwise. Two grams on this turn on this um, cartridge. Two grams. Anti-skating. Two grams. Oh, or setting two. That's it. Arm set up. Let's hear what sounds like. Well we never did look to see if that was uh, driven by a solenoid. I don't think it was. I think it was a manual trip on this one. The D the D is a better turntable. Better quality. No, no buzz. Good stereo separation. No noise. Other than my sump pump. Healing operates nicely. I uh, clean the stylus. Let's check out a return. Excellent. Our speed is right on the money. Very nice. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I love Techniques turntables. They just work. And they just work after 40 somewhat years. They need a little maintenance now and again, but they are lifetime turntables. And uh, there's nothing special about this one. You know, it's just a simple belt drive, uh, simple uh, operation, does give you pitch control if you're into that kind of thing. Personally, I think it's useless. Uh, but, you know, it's there. Um, we should check the uh, stop feature. See? It works. That's why they're great. That's why they're sought after. That's why they're, you know, they command a decent price. What's this turntable worth? 100 to 150 bucks, I would say. How does it perform in comparison to something else? I'd probably choose this over a Riga Planner 1. I really would. Uh, it's got more features. I don't have to get up and change the belt position on the pulley when I want to go to 45. Um, it looks nice. I think it's still very stylish today. Um, pitch adjustment. Again, if, you, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, nice cueing at the front. And a, a cut feature. 
And uh, I think it'll probably sound just as good. So anyway, gentlemen and ladies and anyone else who's watching, thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to be redoing uh, the dual 50, uh, 515. That was the first turntable I ever did uh, where I had the camera set off to the side. Um, I just got another one in. I get a lot of dual uh, 5 series, like 514s, 515s, 505, 503. I get a ton of those. And I thought uh, we'll do it with the uh, new camera position and, um, and and get into the guts of that, uh, that 515 because that's a nice table as well. Um, it's very similar to this actually as far as features and, and quality wise so uh, it'd be nice just to dig that and we'll, we'll take it apart and uh, we'll, we'll you know we'll remove the turntable and do a whole, the whole guts on it so um, stay tuned for that one but in the meantime have a great day thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next video bye bye